Our platform offers you a vast library of tools which you can use to solve your business challenges. As you can imagine, with such a large toolkit, there are going to be things that you may never come across or use. Even veteran flowgrammers continue to discover new things. In this lesson, we'll share some flowgramming tips and tricks that will help you discover the best and most efficient solutions. With such a large library of tools at your disposal, it's more important than ever to resist the temptation to dive right into flowgramming. Instead, you should first ask, can I do X with my application? In other words, is there a connector available for the application you want to use? If so, does the connector contain the actions you need? When we build connectors for Okta workflows, they're often built for specific use cases. While apps can have very robust APIs, we focus our efforts on building the most valuable actions. Let's imagine that I have a use case that leverages the Salesforce connector. I want to use it to kick off a series of events for my team when an opportunity is closed and won. To make this more realistic, let's say I want to notify my team via Slack as well. First, I have to ask myself, what are the kinds of things that I can do with Salesforce? From an app action point of view, I can answer this question by inspecting the methods to discover that I can search records, read related records, and work with files or attachments. Now I have a clear, general idea of what I can accomplish in Salesforce by building a flow. Often people review the actions and events that we just discussed and say, I have everything I need to build. The next, natural step seems to be jumping in and building flows. However, this is often the longer way to accomplish a goal because no design choices were made prior to getting started. Just like you wouldn't want to build a house without a blueprint, you don't want to build a flow without considering any business rules you need to implement what data types you'll be working with, and which cards work best with those data types. Thinking about these details will help you create more efficient flows in less time. You can accomplish this easily by looking at action cards while drawing a simple diagram with pencil and paper. Then you will have a blueprint to work from as you build your flow and avoid the need to improvise throughout the entire process. Once you've thought through your process on paper, you should take time to test the individual cards that you intend to employ using sample data. Testing cards will help you determine the requirements for inputs in those cards, what outputs are available, and what sorts of values the cards return. Taking these steps will prevent you from making incorrect assumptions about card functionality that could hinder the development of your flow. Most connectors have read and search cards as part of their app actions. Search cards typically give you the option of returning all results or just the first one. This often helps when you need a collection of data and you might need to use subsets of that data throughout the flow. A search card typically does not result in an error if you search with an invalid blank or null value. Also, if the API allows it, you can search by using one or more inputs. The read card comes in handy when you already have the ID of the record you want to retrieve available to you. Search functionality can be really handy, particularly for new flow grammars. If you can't remember the exact name of what you want or know a related term, Search can help you locate the card you need. Each card has both professional and layman's terms associated with it, so you can even use words like portion to find cards like pluck and text segment. With these flowgramming tips and tricks, you should find flow design to be more straightforward as well as efficient, particularly when you're working with teams that share resources.